Hi everyone, this is Nico71 and you're watching the design secrets of the Berlier T100 with the complete story and design process on this creation. This model is a remote control 1 to 20 reproduction of the French Berlier T100 in Lego Technique. I will present first the original track before my reproduction. The T100 was the biggest truck at its time, with 5 meters high, 5 meters wide, 15 meters long and a weight of 50 tons. It was designed by French manufacturer Berlier in 1950 to transport heavy equipment for oil exploration projects in Sahara. The idea was to carry heavy indecivable mass avoiding to use many trucks to transport equipment and then reassemble it contributing to a better operation cost. Therefore, the truck was designed to handle 100 tons of material, with conception choice accordingly. The first is a tire. With the help of Michelin, they designed a unique tire which can handle the weight but with only 1 kg per square centimeter of pressure, same as dromedary's foot to not be stuck in a dune. The T100 is powered by a 24 liters. V12 diesel engine from Cummins, firstly in 600 horsepower and then in 700. The drive train is 6x6 with optional front axle drives, but the side wheel can be also powered when the others are free to move thanks to many locking devices. Each axle has a locking differential and there is also one between the front and the rear axle. The suspension are composed of a rear bogey with leaf spring and torsion bar, and a front suspended axle with leaf spring and level arm shock absorbers. The T100 was pretty high-end truck with cab air cooling and 6 aeronautic multi-disc brakes. When the competitor, Kenworth, had no brake on the front axle. Kenworth that you can see on this picture in the back. To finish, a small auxiliary two-cylinder Penha engine placed on the rear supplies all pressure and electricity when the big V12 is not turning on. The first T100 was presented in 1957 in the automotive exhibition in Paris, which was a great success. A second T100 was built and sent to Algeria, working for a mining company based in Assi Messaoud, then rejoined by the first one. The third T100 was built for the French Atomic Energy Commission to work in a uranium mine. It is equipped with Marel damp and double rear tire. Unfortunately, the big fuel consumption combined with the Algerian discovery of an easily accessible gas field making the T100 project non-viable in the Great Western Erg. Then Berlier decided to use the last chassis to make a truck for the US. They engage a US designer and create the Tulsa T100, equipped with a 5-seat advanced cabin with beds. It was presented in Tulsa and Chicago, but did not have any other. Then he came back to France and was used to test a gas turbine of about 1000 horsepower. In 1981, the second T100 returned to France at the Fondation Berlier to be restored and will be exhibited as many shows. The first one can be seen today at Assimé Saud. So, let's talk about my LEGO Technique reproduction. It features 6x6 drive with pneumatic locking differential, steering, suspension, fake V12 engine, rear auxiliary engine connected to the crumpet saw, and a winch. It measures 63 cm length, 22 cm width, 23 cm height, and weighs 3 kg. 
The model is equipped with three L motors placed on each axle. It drives the wheel with spur gear and portal hub. The central rear axle is connected to the fake V12 engine placed on the front with civic joint and gearing. The front steering is operated by a M motor placed on the front axle, which drive a warm gear through a clutch, which operates a rack and pinion. Unfortunately, the steering wheel is not connected to the steering due to the available room inside. I have not used the portal hub from LEGO to build the front portal hub as the pivot was too far from the wheel, which makes the wheel touch the wheel arch. Therefore, I have used a homemade building with CV join which limit the steering angle but fits the wheel arch. You can note also that a small rubber wheel is placed on the pivot of the portal hub. It is to avoid the wheel to cumber with the weight. It enables the wheel to have a support where they can roll and increase the rigidity of the front axle. Each axle has a locking differential which connects both wheels of an axle with a driving ring. All differential locking are operated in the same time using a motor M which drive a compressor and a switch valve. A clutch on this valve prevents force on the structure when the compressor is operated. The last motorized function is a winch placed behind the cabin. It is operated by a M motor with spur gearing, ensuring enough force to pull object on the rear ramp. The rear suspension are based on a bogey design. Each axle is connected with a big oscillating arm. Multiple connecting rods hold each axle to avoid lateral and longitudinal translation. Each rear axle is equipped with a torsion bar made with connecting rod and a long axle. The front axle is different from the rear one due to the part limitation. Instead of a leaf spring, I use classic shock absorber. The front axle is connected to the chassis with a rubber part and held in position with an arm and many connecting rods. All these functions are attached to the chassis designed to be as strong as possible. The design process was a bit complicated. Indeed, I wanted first to replicate the complex drivetrain of the T100 with gearbox, transfer case, central locking differential, etc. Therefore, I have started designing the axle and connecting the gearbox and central differential. I have made some tests but it doesn't work well on climbing with a cracking sound from the gearbox. So, I reworked the gearbox and central differential to be able to handle more torque. After some testing, the gearbox and differential were fine, but the transmission shaft on the axle was broken, mainly because of the high torque on the U-join. I have tested with more gear reduction after the U-join to reduce the torque on it, and then tested reinforced U-join, but the drive shaft still has too much torque to handle. I realized that the truck was simply too heavy for this transmission. And without the new portal axle from LEGO which proposed 1 to 5 reduction, I will not be able to have an efficient and safe drive train. That is why I decided to restart the project at the beginning. I chose to onboard the motor on the axle and use only spur gear without U-join. It results in a very efficient drive train with no cracking sound but of course no gearbox. The only limitation will be the electrical motor itself also made more space inside the chassis to add the compressor, winch and reinforce the chassis. Considering the scale, the interior of the chassis is not very large, so it was welcome to not have a central gearbox. After completing a working drivetrain with basic chassis, I have started working on a design. I wanted to reproduce as accurately as possible the original design, height it is very iconic. I have started with the mud guard, which led me to design a custom portal hub for the front axle to reduce the turning offset, as told before. Then I designed the cabin and the hood, which gave me the available space for the fake engine. That is why it is composed of a moving axle and not the big 2x2 cylinders. 
I continue with the rear of the cabin and the ramp, I working on the detail with the interior, but also on the exterior with the light, guardrail and other detail. Then I improve the design to have a cleaner look by covering the hole or choosing different parts or orientation. An example can be seen on the side of the mud guards, which are composed of connectors instead of beams. Same principle for the structures above the winch and the cabin. You can also see some non-technique parts, like tiles and wedge, to cover the hole or create the correct shape, for instance on the side of the ramp, the hood or the front angle. It is not perfect, but it contributes to have a neat design. When finished, I dismantled all the design parts and reinforced the chassis accordingly, and it was done. It was a long work of about two months, mainly because I have restarted the project regarding the draft train. I wanted to have a reliable and efficient draft train, especially if people rebuilt this truck. But at the end, the climbing ability is rather good considering the weight and the motorization. All functions are packed on only one S-brick with non-spaghetti cable layout. The yellow color fits well the original sun yellow color and the detail gives a sturdy look. With the sticker from Forward Sticker, it gives the final touch of accuracy, which makes the truck recognizable and looks as strong as the real one, which was the biggest at its time. Thank you for your time. If you want to see the original video, please click on the recommended left video. If you want more details, there are links in the description for the pictures and building instruction. Considering subscribing if you like my content. Take care, play well, bye.